Okay. Great. Let's get started. Good evening. My name is Yolana Wasserseig. I'm the Assistant Registrar of Student Recruitment here at the University of King's College. And if you're joining us for this webinar live or you're watching a recording of this on the King's YouTube channel, uh, I'd just like to let you know that what you're about to see is a webinar presentation all about what it's like to come to King's as an undergraduate student if you're a student from the United States of America. So what we'll cover today is a little bit of an overview about what we do at King's, uh, some things that might be helpful to know about the admissions proce process if you're coming from the United States. And I'm also joined today by two of our current students, Sam and Laura, and I'll introduce them to you a little bit later uh, to answer any questions that you have. So without further ado, let's get started. This is a beautiful picture of the Arts and Administration Building at the University of King's College. King's is a small university in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Our total student population is about 900. So we are a very tight knit community on our campus, uh, as you'll see. And we specialize in arts and humanities, liberal arts. We have fantastic programs in the sciences that are offered in conjunction with our partner university, Dalhousie University. I'll say a little bit more about them. We're also extremely well known for our journalism program. One of the students who you'll meet later this uh, session, Sam, is a journalism student, and the other student who you'll meet is a science student. And King's is also really well known for a unique first year program that we offer called the Foundation Year Program. So you're, you'll hear me say more about all of those programs. We're also characterized by our tight knit community, uh, our commitment to first year students and the experience that they have. Um, and just in general, being a really warm and inclusive and friendly place. Uh, so I hope that that will all come across as we talk about the university and its programs. Before I launch into that, I just want to say a little bit about where we are right now. So right now, I am personally in my living room in downtown Halifax. This is the city I was born in. I love this city. Uh, and King's is located in the heart of Halifax, um, about a 10 minute walk from downtown maybe a 15 minute walk from this beautiful historic harbor front uh, that you can see in the image. Halifax is the capital of Nova Scotia. Uh, it's also known by its Mi'kmaq name, Ukchibuktuk. Chibuktuk means the great harbor. And all of Nova Scotia is uh, within Mi'kmaq, the ancestral, ancestral traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq people. So if you're a student from outside Nova Scotia or outside Canada altogether, and you're going to be coming to Halifax to be part of the King's community, it's important that you know that you'll be entering Mi'kmaq and you'll be part of the uh, legacy, the heritage, and the work that needs to happen in order to reconcile traditional Mi'kmaq communities with settler communities. And that work is something that is extremely important um, to the University of King's College and is really uh, central to what we do right now. So uh, that's all helpful, I think, background for you to know about our community. So what do we teach on our campus? There are four types of academic programs or four types of academic degrees, I should say, uh, that are offered for undergraduate students at King's. You can get a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, a Bachelor of Journalism, or a Bachelor of Music. So if you're someone who genuinely loves books and ideas, if you like languages, literature, if the idea of interdisciplinary studies, things like history of science and technology, art history, indigenous studies, black and African diaspora studies, law, justice, and society, political science, any of those types of programs and more, uh, we would definitely encourage you to consider an arts degree. Arts degrees encompass a wide range of subjects um, and an arts degree can be fantastic preparation for a career in education, in law, working in the nonprofit sector, um, doing a wide range of different types of degrees that would use your skills as a strong reader, writer, and communicator. If you're someone who loves the sciences, there's a lot to offer through the Faculty of Science that's shared by Kings and Dalhousie. Uh, I think this is probably clear from the picture I just showed you of the city of Halifax, but we're right by the coast. Uh, and because of that, we're especially well known for our programs in marine biology and ocean sciences. Uh, but that's certainly not the end of all of the sciences that we offer on our campus. 
And if you're thinking about uh, maybe a career in medicine or the medical sciences uh, or in research sciences, a science degree is a great way to go. Uh, a music degree is offered through our Fountain School of Performing Arts that we share with our neighbors at Dalhousie. Um, the Fountain School also encompasses a theater program. So if you love the performing arts, both music and theater are available. And last but certainly not least is the Journalism School. King's is widely recognized as one of the top journalism schools in Canada. Right in the middle of my screen here, you can see the letter is FYP. That stands for Foundation Year Program. Um, most King students just say FIP. FIP is a unique program. If you come to King's, you will most likely choose to do this program in your freshman year. FIP is a program that's really built around books and ideas. Our students spend their first year of their college degree together, learning together, reading the same books at the same time, and thinking them through with a team of extremely supportive professors that guide them through these ideas. No matter what you're planning to specialize in, whether you are more focused on the arts or sciences or journalism or music, you can start your degree with the foundation year. And that's a really special way to kind of bridge that transition from the senior year of high school to your freshman year at college. Uh, you're going to be moving into a community of like-minded learners that are excited about exploring ideas together. So we definitely recommend the foundation year program to any student who likes to read, who likes a bit of a challenge, uh, and who really likes the idea of learning in a supportive environment in nice small class sizes. In the United States, there are several liberal arts colleges that offer what they often call a great books program. If you've heard of a great books program before, Foundation Year uh, is a really good match for that kind of thing. We don't usually call it a great books program on our campus, uh, but if you're exploring the opportunity to learn in that style, but do it in Canada, FIP is a great fit. I'll also just mention, I could talk for hours and hours about the Foundation Year program, but I don't have time for that tonight. Uh, we did do an entire other webinar session that just explores the Foundation Year program in depth, and you can find that on the King's YouTube channel. If you've registered for this webinar and you're watching me live right now, I'll send you a link to that session as well so you can explore FIP in more depth. Okay. So another really key piece of the King's puzzle is our relationship with our neighbors, Dalhousie University. King's is actually one of the smallest colleges in the Atlantic Canadian region, and our neighbors next door at Dalhousie University are the largest university in Atlantic Canada. They're actually one of the U15 schools, one of the top 15 research institutions in the country. Dalhousie is known for its breadth and depth of programs, its wide variety of choices, and its strong backbone in research, especially in the sciences. Um, they're a really fantastic university. We're very proud to be partnered with them. And our campuses are literally side by side. It takes 30 seconds to walk from King's campus to Dalhousie's campus. We share all of our students' supports and resources. So you can see on the slide here, we share many of our academic programs across the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, the Faculty of Science, and the Fountain School of Performing Arts, which I mentioned earlier, which houses the music department and the theater department. But we also share a wide range of our resources. So for example, the Health and Wellness Center on Dalhousie's campus, where you can find doctors and nurses and psychiatrists and psychologists and anyone you might need to help support your mental or physical health. That Health and Wellness Center is accessible to both the Dalhousie and King students. Um, the International Student Center, the big Dalplex Fitness Center, the Black Student Advising Center, so many resources are shared across both of our campuses. I'd especially like to highlight the International Student Center. If you are uh, a United States citizen and you're coming to study in Canada, you will need to apply for a study permit to enter the country and start your studies. Uh, and the International Student Center has advisors that can help guide you through that process every step of the way. So I would definitely encourage any students thinking of coming to King's to check them out. Just wanted to share some pictures of students at work across both King's and Dal. Um, like I said, we have students exploring the arts and humanities, music, 
science, and journalism. One thing that's true across both of our campuses are the small class sizes, the dedicated faculty, uh, and the fact that you'll be getting a lot of one-to-one -one support. I really do want to highlight that any one of the degrees we offer can start with the foundation year. So if you like those small class sizes, starting with the foundation year program is a really great beginning point. And finally, there's all the fun stuff, student life on campus, the clubs and societies and groups that you can join. Um, I think the pictures I have on the slide does not nearly come close to encompassing all of the things that our students are doing on campus. Uh, we have a great varsity athletics program with uh, a bunch of fantastic student athletes playing basketball, soccer, rugby, badminton, and volleyball. We have a large student theater society, the King's Theatrical Society. Um, that is one of the most popular clubs on our campus. Okay, so I've probably been guilty a few times already during this webinar of switching back and forth between the terminology that Canadians usually use <clears throat> and the terminology that is more common in the United States. This will totally become obvious to you if you end up studying in Canada. But we typically say first year instead of freshman year. So when I'm talking about the foundation year program, that's a first year program. Uh, here in Canada, we usually say grade 11 or grade 12. Um, you might be looking at American colleges that have a frosh week or another kind of name for the first week of uh, your time on campus. At King's, we say a week or orientation week. We also don't have anything that we refer to as spring break. Um, we do have a couple week long breaks in study where you take a break from your classes uh, and you can go home and visit family or friends or just hang around on campus. Um, we call these reading weeks. So there's a reading week in November and another reading week in February. And another thing that we don't have on the King's campus is a Greek system. So we don't have frats or sororities on our campus, but we do have clubs and societies uh, that are all inclusive and open to our students. Might be forgetting some pieces of key terminology um, that differ in Canada and the States, uh, but I think they're all things that our students figure out really quickly. And um, everyone will know what you're talking about if you end up using terminology that's less common in Canada, don't worry. Uh, I really just wanted to highlight it to point out that there isn't a very big difference um, at all with coming to Canada. I don't find that American students that come to King's experience a lot of culture shock. Uh, it's a pretty seamless transition. So let's talk about admissions. And I just wanted to say, I apologize for the little frog in my throat and the fact that I've been um, coughing a bit. So I'll, I'll talk a little more slowly and take my time a bit. So um, the application process is really straightforward and simple. We try to make it as easy and straightforward as possible. Uh, if you are applying to King's, you'll find our online application form on our website. You can submit that application form really anytime before June, but we would strongly encourage you to get it in before March 1st. And the reason for that is that March 1st is our um, deadline for general entrance scholarships. So any applicant that we have before March 1st, we will automatically assess for general entrance scholarships. Uh, so that's a really helpful piece of the puzzle. In addition to an online application form, we also would like to see official transcripts from your high school and a school profile. So we'd like to ask you to, um, you know, check in with your high school uh, college counselor and get them to send that transcript along to us. We're basically looking at a B average. But when I say a B average, uh, I don't mean that we're looking at a B across every class you've ever taken in high school. We're really focused on um, specific classes based on what program you're applying to. So if you will be applying to a Bachelor of Arts, a Bachelor of Journalism, or a Bachelor of Music, we are going to look closely at your grade in your English class and your next four strongest academic subjects. When I say your English class, uh, what I really mean is the class that you are taking that covers a subject like English literature, poetry, humanities. Uh, if you have a class like that, that's the one we're looking at. And then your next four strongest subjects. So we're going to average those classes together. If you are applying to a Bachelor of Science, we will, of course, continue to look at the grade in your English class. We'll also look closely at your grade in a calculus or pre-calculus math. 
and then your next three strongest subjects. And again, we average those together. We're looking for about a B average. Depending on the program you're applying to, there might be one or two other steps for the application process. For example, if you are interested in applying to music, along with our application form, you'll fill out a supplemental application with the Fountain School of Performing Arts, and they will arrange an audition for you. Um, so that's a kind of key step for the music program. And if you're applying for the journalism program, the other key step is that you will submit a short piece of writing, which we call an autobiographical sketch. So about a thousand words where you talk about who you are and why you're interested in journalism. Overall, pretty straightforward. We're looking at your online application form and we're looking at your grades. You can see I've also mentioned the SAT and the ACT. I wanna be really clear here. We are test optional. We've been test optional since 2020. If you have SAT or ACT scores and you'd like to send them in, we certainly encourage it. But if you don't, please don't be concerned. It, it, doesn't, it isn't something we need to see. The only exception uh, would be if you are a homeschooled student, in which case we do need a standardized test score from you. The other thing that sometimes surprises American applicants is that no essay is required for admission to King's. You do not need to write a personal essay to get into the university. However, if you're going to be applying for any of our larger scholarships, which we refer to as our major awards, then there is an essay component to that application process. The deadline for our major awards is the same as our general scholarship deadline. It's March 1st. And I finally want to highlight <clears throat> that if you're taking any advanced placement courses, that can really benefit you in your application process uh, and can really help you be prepared for university. A lot of high school students in the United States have some AP classes on their transcript. If you're getting a four or five on the national exam, those will count as transfer credits uh, in your first year, which is really helpful. If you'd like to see a whole list of which AP classes count for which university transfer credits, you can visit dal.ca slash AP to see how those transfer credits break down. If you ever have questions about the admissions process, I would encourage you to reach out. Uh, you can reach our team at admissions at ukings.ca. That's the email address. Like I said, we're in nice small schools. So if you email us at admissions at ukings.ca with a question, you're gonna get an answer back pretty much right away. It'll come from a regular friendly person who's happy to help you. It'll probably be Tara or Ashley or me. Uh, and Tara or Ashley or me would be happy to help guide you through the process. So I'd like to introduce you to some of our students now. Um, I've invited both Laura and Sam to join us. Laura is a fourth year student doing a Bachelor of Science honors in marine bio with a minor in ocean science and also getting a certificate in environmental impact assessment. And Sam is also a fourth year student uh, doing a Bachelor of Journalism honors with a minor in contemporary studies. And I'll stop sharing my screen so you can see all of our faces a little bit more clearly. Okay. Um, hi, Laura and Sam. Uh, I'm going to give it a moment just in case the people who are joining us have questions they want to type into the um, Q&A feature in the webinar. Um, but while people are thinking about questions they have, would you both like to maybe say a little bit about where you're from, You know why you maybe decided to come to King's? You can think back to what it was like when you were in your senior year and your decision-making process. Uh, I can start. Uh, so Kings, I know for some folks is the only school that they apply to there, you know, certain that's where they want to go. I did apply to a few different schools. I applied to some U.S. schools and then some Canadian schools. Um, but I actually uh, met a representative from Kings at a college fair. Uh, so I am from Massachusetts, so I went to a college fair in Boston, and there was a representative uh, from King's, and I went and spoke with them and learned about Foundation Year program and decided to apply, and then, you know, I came and visited and uh, decided that it was a great fit for me. Yeah, um, kind of similar to Laura, I'm also from uh, Massachusetts, and I actually, I think, first heard about Kings from a Dow rep at a um, admissions fair. So they kind of told me about Dow, but then also told me about Kings. Um, I'd been to Nova Scotia a couple times before and kind of liked the, knew I liked the city uh, here in Halifax. 
And after visiting for, um, I think, an open house that I came for, I just really, really liked King. And I had applied to a number or a few other U.S. schools as well as Canadian ones, but ended up uh, coming here to King's. So I'm very happy with that decision. Awesome. Um, thank you both so much. Uh, I It's okay if people who are tuned in live don't have questions to ask right now or are feeling shy about them. I have some questions that I... Um, prepped for you uh, in advance because I, I thought we might have a quieter audience tonight. Um, so can we start with, for either of you can jump in with an answer to this one, but was there anything about moving to Canada that surprised you or that you weren't expecting when you first arrived? I guess uh, I could go first. Really, for me, not not really. I would say I think it was a pretty a pretty seamless transition. Um, like I think while there are some kind of small small kind of cultural differences here um, compared to New England, um, it's not a big deal. I think maybe if um, a student is coming from somewhere far away in the U.S., somewhere different, maybe like California or Texas or something, maybe that'd be a bit different. But uh, coming from Massachusetts, you know, like I've you know kind of always grown up on the coast, coming here to the coast, so. For me, it was a very kind of, it feels like home in a way, I would say. Awesome. Yeah, I would echo that. I think that there wasn't really anything that I was too, too shocked about and anything that like I kind of was accustomed to that was a little bit different. Uh, most people in Canada were able to kind of assist me with and it. it wasn't a big challenge, even if there was something that was a little bit different. Everyone was pretty accustomed. There's a lot of American tourists, obviously, that come to Halifax as well. So people can kind of help you deal with any like minor changes if there, there are any sort of discrepancies and differences, but none really major ones come to mind. Yeah. Um, we got a question in the Q&A about what do you like to do off campus for fun? Maybe before turning to this question about what you like to do off campus for fun, can I just ask if either of you do things on campus that you find fun? Like are any of you, either of you in any kind of clubs or societies or groups on campus that you like to explore? And maybe we can talk about both the on-campus and off-campus part of your social life. Uh, yeah, I can start out. Uh, I am a part of the U Kings uh, Literary Society, which is a very long running society uh, that is here at Kings. And uh, essentially, we have uh, bi-monthly, twice a month meetings uh, that are themed. And so you can bring a piece of literature, whether that's a chapter from your favorite book or a poem or, you know, we, we kind of are expansive with it. You know, people read from like a cereal box or something. Um, and it's just kind of a way to gather people together, eat some nice, you know, cheese and crackers and stuff and talk about a theme uh, we're having our birthday meeting, so everyone's going to read something about birthdays, for instance. Uh, so that's here at King's. And then I'm also a part of the Marine Biology Association over at Dalhousie. So one of each uh, societies, I guess. Awesome. Yeah, um, I would say for me, probably the big uh, thing I'm involved in, um, I'm a journalism student. So I uh, this year actually started writing for the Dalhousie Gazette, which is the uh, student newspaper for uh, Dalhousie, which is right next door. Um, it's actually the, I believe the oldest newspaper, or sorry, the oldest student newspaper that's continually running in North America. Um, so that's kind of a cool little fact, but Kings um, as well, we have a student paper here called The Watch. I just sort of ended up at the uh, Dalhousie Gazette. I have a number of uh, friends who are working there this year who kind of convinced me to to come over. But it's been it's been a lot of fun to kind of have somewhere to get to kind of practice, um, you know, you know, getting journalism out there and getting stuff published. So it's been it's been a great experience. Awesome. So in terms of on campus, we've got the school newspaper. Laura's involved in the Lit Society and the Marine Bio Society. I'll probably add that like any other academic program you can think of on our campus will have a society connected to it. So if you're a biology student, there's a bio society. If you're a history of science and technology student, there's a society on campus for that. Uh, I think I already mentioned a very large theater society on our campus. So that kind of covers the on-campus fun. Can we talk a little bit about what it's like to have, what's fun to do off campus uh, in and around Halifax? Yeah, sure. Um, I, or, so I'd be happy to start. Um, Halifax is such a such a great little city. It's super, super small, super accessible. 
Um, you know, there's just so much stuff to do within a quick walk or a quick bus ride, um, just right down the street from King's. Um, you know, aside from kind of the basic, um, you know, going out to have dinner with friends or that kind of thing. Um, one of my favorite things has actually been getting outside the city a little bit um, in the past couple of years, especially um, back during uh, my second year, during the, the first year of the pandemic when a lot of classes were online. And I found myself um, with a lot more free time. Um, some of my friends and I would go on just road trips all over Nova Scotia. So I've actually gotten to see just about all, all of Nova Scotia nearly. Um, and what's so nice about uh, being here in Nova Scotia is that, uh, or I guess in Halifax, like you can really just drive about 10 minutes outside the city and you are pretty much like out there. Um, there's just so many beautiful spots, you know, along the coast or also inland a bit that are very nearby and um, pretty accessible, you know, beaches, that kind of thing. So it's just a, it's a really cool province to be in um, if you kind of like getting out there and exploring um, outside the city as well. Awesome. Yeah, I think that uh, I personally don't have a car. I don't know a lot of people with cars, so I do tend to stay um, more in Halifax, but there's certainly plenty to do uh, here as well as Sam alluded to there's you know lots of different restaurants you can go and try out they're always you know building new ones and you know different things are are coming in so there's always kind of turnover with that you can try new new restaurants and new food um there are the public gardens which are open uh pretty much year round i think um they do like clear some pathways even when it snows in the winter uh so those can be really nice uh in the spring and summertime you can go and study and read there and then even in the winter you can walk through if it's nice out uh the waterfront is really built up there's quite a lot of stuff to do on the waterfront you can get dinner you can go shopping uh just take a walk there so I would say the waterfront's another uh pretty beautiful part of Halifax and it's a pretty good distance uh to walk from Kings it's only about maybe 15 minutes or so uh to get down there so that's one of my favorite parts, definitely, of the city. I think a thing that's worth mentioning about Halifax is considering the size of the city, we have a lot of university students here. Uh, Kings and Dalhousie are uh, kind of right in the heart of downtown, but there's also St. Mary's University, the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, uh, Mount St. Vincent University, and the Nova Scotia Community Colleges, uh, all within the boundaries of the city. So because of that, there are a lot of people in our city who are like 18 or 17 to 23 years old, roughly. Um, and that means that the kinds of things that are fun to do in Halifax tend to be things that are going to be really appealing to that age group. Um, so the restaurants, the coffee shops, the whole like vibe downtown uh, is, I think, especially fun if you are kind of an undergraduate student because you meet a lot of people who are like, your age and going through the same thing in life that you're going through. Um, okay, we also had a question about residents in our campus. Um, have both of you lived in on-campus housing before? Are either of you currently living in residence? Awesome. Um, so the question here about if rooms are doubles or singles, uh, and I should just mention that Kings and Dalhousie have separate residence buildings. So King students typically live on the Kings campus and our friends at Dal, uh, typically live on Dalhousie's campus. Um, who wants to start with kind of talking about what it's like to live in residence and double singles roommates, those pieces? Uh, I can start with this one. Uh, so I did live in residence uh, in my first year. I lived in the building that is in your background there, Yolana. Um, it's called Alice Hall. So I lived in a double room. So I had a roommate um, in a very sort of traditional setup. We had two beds right next to each other, you know, the full college experience there. Um, uh, and so that was really nice. There is like a common uh, kitchen area. You can heat up food and stuff. There are um, like spaces. There's something, the manning room where you can go and um, be with your friends. There's a bunch of couches. There's a table. You can do your homework. Uh, so there are some nice common spaces in there as well. Um, and then I actually currently work now in residence. So that's kind of a way to stay connected. Even if you do end up moving off campus, um, you can you can still sort of be involved in, in residence life uh, even afterwards. Awesome. 
Yeah, um, I so I was in residence the first year. I was also in Alex Hall. Uh, the middle two years, I was off campus in the apartment with some friends. And actually, funny enough, I'm back in uh, residence now in my fourth year. Um, it just kind of worked out that it was a, a good option for me. I knew um, this year is just very busy for journalism, um, and all my all the journalism classes are um, on the King's campus here. So I just kind of figured it would be nice to be uh, just pretty close for that, and it has turned out to be. A very good choice. Uh, I've gotten to meet some new people as well, so it's been nice. But the residence is here. Um, I was in uh, a double side of roommate the first year, but now I have a single room, so it's pretty uh, been pretty nice. But uh, yeah, you know, buildings are great. Uh, you get to meet some people, so it's, it's a pretty good experience. Overall, there are definitely more doubles than singles in our residences. Um, it's very common, especially if you're a first year student, to have a roommate. We ask a lot of questions on a residence application form that are very specific, that are designed to help match students with the right roommate. Um, and then students who are in their upper year, uh, like Sam, who's a fourth year, are much more likely to have a single room. And single rooms are also earmarked for students that have a documented medical need. So if you're an upper year student or there's a medical need, you're more likely to be in a single. Uh, but most of the time, first year students are in double rooms. Um, I'll also mention most of our residence buildings are co-ed. Uh, there's a couple designated floors um, specifically for female students. There's also a couple of designated spaces on campus where the majority of the students who are living there are uh, non-binary or trans students. Um, so a couple of different types of residence spaces. Uh, but if there's any other questions about residents, please throw them in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, okay, I'm going to throw one of the questions on um, my list at you. Uh, can we talk a little bit more about the King's Foundation Year program, which I mentioned during my webinar presentation, but I didn't really get a chance to like dive into. Um, do either of you have experiences you want to share with what it was like being a student in FIP uh, in your first year and um, how you feel it may have kind of helped you kind of move along with the rest of your degree? Yeah, sure. Um, I can I can I can start with that. I I started out here and did FIP. Um, most most people do do FIP in their first year, um, as you said. But I found it to be just uh, I was probably one of my favorite experiences from my time here at King's. Uh, it was just a lot of fun. You're kind of taking the same taking the same classes and lectures with it, just about everybody else in the first year. So you really get to know a lot of people, and it can be great. Um, you know, to really you know kind of put yourself out there, and also. You know, everyone's going, everyone's doing the same class at the same time. So you can kind of help each other and work on the essays, kind of, you know, have people read your essays, that, that kind of thing. Um, it was just for me a really great community building experience. Um, but I also really um, enjoyed reading. I really, I still do enjoy reading. So it was a lot of fun to get to kind of open myself up, open myself up to a lot of, um, you know, different books that I probably would not have otherwise. Yeah, uh, I would say. Uh, I also did the foundation year program. Uh, my experience probably was a little bit different uh, because I did it as a science student, in which case you only attend three uh, of the four lectures per week. And that just sort of gives you enough time in your schedule to be able to take uh, any sort of math or science courses that you also need to take in your first year just to kind of keep you on track for your degree. Uh, but I really enjoy reading as well as, um, you know, doing labs and, you know, scientific work. So that kind of made uh, FIP science a really good path for me. Uh, and definitely it helped me to build up my writing skills. I think that sometimes uh, scientists are, you know, you're focused on, okay, you know, I need to calculus, physics, um, stuff like that. But certainly writing, I think, is just a really valuable skill to have in almost any discipline you can go into, uh, including the sciences. So I really would advocate if you do like reading, uh, even if you're thinking of going more on a science path later on, to really consider FIP, uh, because I do think that it, it helped me to build up skills that I continue to use as, you know, a fourth year marine bio student. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, okay. This question in the Q&A that is, any plans after graduation? Do you think you might stay in Canada? Do you think you're headed back home in the States? Are you plan to grad schools? What's, what do you think you might do uh, uh, after you graduate? The ever-present question, definitely, as you hit fourth year, everyone's like, oh, so what are your plans? Um, for me personally, uh, I 
I'm looking possibly into applying for a permanent residency in Canada. I know some Americans already hold dual citizenship when they uh, come here, but I only hold American citizenship. So I am considering uh, possibly becoming a permanent resident. Uh, and I also recently applied to the Peace Corps. So that would be a totally different path uh, somewhere else in the world. So we'll kind of see how things pan out. I'm kind of in the, the waiting stage of different things right now. Yeah, um, I think I, I'm still trying to figure that out as well. Um, but I am looking to, to possibly stay here in the Maritimes afterwards. Um, I'm trying to find uh, right now we're working on in journalism. Um, in April in the fourth year, you have an internship um, that is uh, part of the, the journalism, uh, I guess, curriculum. So I'm trying to, uh, we're, we're just starting to work on trying to figure out where we'd like to go for that. And a lot of times, um, you know, that will lead to employment afterwards, which will help you out getting um, a work permit, which is, which is sort of the next step. Uh, one of the next steps you can do um, after your student visa ends after you graduate. So I would like to stay here. Um, so I'm kind of I'm working on that right now, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, from my experience working at King's, I would say it's pretty common for a lot of our students from the United States to make a decision to stick around a little longer after graduation. Applying for the postgraduate work permit um, has a couple steps and can be a bit daunting. There are advisors at our International Student Center that can help with that, though. Uh, so I, I've noticed that that's a pathway that a lot of students take. Um, but I'm excited to hear that both of you are considering sticking around. Uh, and uh, I think both of you are going to go on to do really awesome things regardless of where you end up. Um, before we wrap up, I guess my last question that I wanted to ask you both is, do you have any advice for a person who is uh, a junior or a senior in high school right now, somewhere in the States, and is thinking of maybe coming to Kings in the future? Or maybe a better way to frame this question is, is there a piece of advice you wish you had gotten when you were a first year student? Uh, I think probably uh, the main thing that I wish I would have known, uh, especially as you're sort of trying to figure out what's going to happen. Uh, and if you're not having a lot of other people, like say from your high school, also go down that path um, is that you sort of can take a risk and it can certainly pay off. And it's not necessarily a bad thing if you're the only one who wants to do it. You know, you're not crazy for for deciding okay you know this is I'm gonna you know move to to Nova Scotia if you feel like Kings is you know a good fit I would definitely kind of encourage myself to go for it obviously I did uh in the end but kind of assure myself that you know there is a community that you can make here and Kings is definitely helpful with that uh in terms of being a really close-knit community that even though I didn't know anyone say from my high school who also came here uh, I did really find community pretty quickly after coming to Kings. Yeah, I would I would probably say something similar there. Um, I would say I did not know anybody here uh, before I came. I was just kind of looking for looking for an adventure, and I uh, certainly had one. It's been uh, probably the best decision I've made. Um, it's just such that so easy to get to know people here, and just uh, at Kings, but also the Greater Halifax community is just one of the friendliest around. Um, and I would just say, yeah, um, you know, if you're looking for something a little different, maybe, but still a lot of fun, I would say really, I'd encourage you to consider Kings. It has been, um, it's just been an, an awesome four years here. Well, thank you both so much. Um, I'm just going to throw a few kind of closing pieces of information into the chat before we wrap up today. So um, first of all, I've just shared the email address for admissions at ukings.ca. Um, that's a great general email address to reach me or anyone else on our team. And if you'd like to reach me personally, I'm at yolana.watersug at, U at uh, ukings.ca, uh, which I'm putting in the chat right now. Um, I'll also mention on our future students page on our website, we have a wide range of other webinars that we've done uh, and online events. If we have um, students that are thinking of coming to visit us on campus, you can also go to that webpage to book a campus tour or plan a visit. Um, seeing the campus in person is a really great thing to do if you can. Sometimes it's a, a bit of a further trip. Uh, I know for a lot of our students, um, like both of you who came from New England, it's not quite as far. Um, so it might be a little bit feasible to come and visit for a campus tour. And with that in mind, I'll also just mention that one of our larger on-campus events uh, that's coming up really soon is our winter open house, 
So I'm also putting the link um, to that event in the chat right now. It's going to be on February 25th. Um, if any of you watching this right now have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Like I said, yolana.wazersag at ukings.ca or admissions at ukings.ca. And I just, again, want to thank both of our panelists for being so generous with your time and so thoughtful with your answers to questions. Um, really excited to see what both of you end up doing next. I, I think you've brought a lot to the King's community by being here. So anyway, thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening and thanks for watching this session.
um, that is one of the most popular clubs on our campus. 